Well, we wanted to talk for a few minutes about the book. I don't know if you want Shiloh to sit in on this or not, or if that's up to you. Um, probably best if you, you went mm -hmm. out back in or something. Sorry. All right. Let's see if that's a closer. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I guess I'll start it out. I guess uh, I was kind of flabbergasted to the point that I really don't know what to say. So I'm going to let the Bible do the talking here. I'm going to just review a few things that I saw in the book and then we'll look up some scriptures. So you, you read the book? Well, I... You read the book? I read the book, yeah. I, yeah. Okay. This is where this material that I'm going to bring up now that came out of there. Did, did you read the book yep. too? On several occasions, I noticed words like "damn," "sack of sh," blank, blank, gut-wrenching lust, real bastards. Uh, I thought now maybe it'd be appropriate if we opened up our Bibles and, and looked at Ephesians 4:29. It says, let a rotten saying not proceed out of your mouth, but whatever saying is good for building up as the need may be, that it may impart what is favorable to the hearers. Well, that pretty strong counsel on uh, some of those words there. But then in looking through the book, I found uh, various sexual overtones that were highlighted. Some erotic lessons he spoke of, and his hand sought the soft flesh of her breast. God, how he wanted her, as they joined together as one soul. And then once she made the comment to have him make passionate love to her. And on page 160, there was a graphic sexual act picture pictured in. On 206 there was another sexual context suggested. So I thought maybe we could read Philippians 4.8. Brother McClure, would you like to read that one? Sure. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are of serious concern, whatever things are righteous, whatever things are chaste, whatever things are lovable, whatever things are well spoken of, whatever virtue there is and whatever praiseworthy thing there is, continue considering these things. Okay. Um, you did notice the alert, alluding to, to being chaste, uh, the thought in that scripture. Mm -hmm. And also it talks about praiseworthy things, considering things of that nature. Uh, I think it's well spoken of. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I thought we might look at Matthew 15, 18, too. I think, uh, you know, writing it down would be about the same as saying something. Uh, who would like to read that one? I'll read that one. It says, however, the things proceeding out of the mouth come out of the heart, and those things defile the man. Okay. So, can you see how that would apply to mm -hmm. some of the things here? Then, uh, as I went on, I found different... Uh, suggestions of immorality or adultery and uh, one that especially caught my eye was on 
pages 267 and 270 where they were viewing one another from behind when they were riding horses and they got kind of an erotic feeling out of it. Oh, come on, Russ, I mean... Well, let's read what Jesus said about something like that. Matthew 5:28. Matthew 5.28 says, But I say to you that everyone that keeps on looking at a woman so as to have a passion for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. But don't they have to be married to someone else for it to be adultery? I always understood that they have to be married to someone else for it to be adultery. In, in, this, in this account, it, it is. He's using this as an example of things even single people would want to keep away from. Is what he's doing, but the scripture applies definitely to a married person here committing adultery in his heart. But at the same time, it would apply to single people and controlling their passions. But in talking about a husband or a wife, I mean, even after 24 years, Mike and I look at each other and have a passion for one another. And that's proper. Because you're not committing adultery. Okay, well then let's back up a little bit. Let me ask you guys something. Someone is stranded on a deserted island. There's no one else around to marry them. As soon as that first act is committed, they commit to one another, and in Jehovah's eyes, they're married. Is that, is that true? Is that a true statement, Jim? If you're on a deserted island, in, in this story, you both brothers have read it. There's no They're one on a deserted marry them. island. There's no one there to marry them. They, they fall commit in to love. One another. They commit to one another. Is it fornication? Okay, let's let's. No, no. Yes or no? Is it fornication, Jim? Yes. Why? Because they don't have a priest or an elder to marry them, but they no. made a commitment to themselves. No. Okay. The book tells us why. Okay, show me. Kim's book tells us why. When they got back. Mm -hmm. and were rescued, they did not consider themselves married. They had problems that they had to work out. But they did not consider themselves married. Okay. This, this is more of a principle here. Uh, but I'm, that's right, but I'm looking at it from what the book said, that when they got back on, in, in, uh, were they in Texas or someplace? Wherever they were, they did not consider themselves married. She, she, she was lived in Texas California. and he lived in L.A. But they didn't consider themselves married when they got back. Okay. Anyway, I thought it was, uh, was a good point what Jesus said, you know, just looking at people. Uh, you know, he, well, he carries it further. I mean, Jesus carried it further than what what mm -hmm. we, you or I, would actually, uh, you know, we, we would depend on somebody saying something or or some kind of an act. Mm -hmm. Here, Jesus, just, just looking, you know. Well, my intent when I wrote it was they had made a commitment to one another on the island. Yes, they had a few problems to work out, especially, you know, living in totally different parts of the country. But, I mean, they never dated anyone else. They were committed to one another. They had to work through these problems. They were in love, even though they didn't want to admit it to themselves. Well, you have some I did not have the intent that they committed immorality or adultery or fornication. Because to me, on the island, they this, made The a scripture doesn't to say they did either. They said they, they have it in their heart. Jesus said they have it just by looking with a passion. Mm -hmm. They have it in their heart. But, I mean, when, like I said, though, even now, after 23 years, Mike and I can look at each other I guess I don't understand what you're, where you're coming from because and the guy's obviously in love with, uh, with the woman in, in the book. And how is this different from like the Shulamite maiden? I mean, when you guys read that, that's a what's pretty the, graphic. What's the intent of that? Of that? But what took place with the Shulamite maiden? Well, it was honorable, and that it was honorable. Sense. That's right. She did not give in to the flesh of the mm -hmm. layers where the book 
allows him to give in to the flesh and desires. But didn't he have a passion for her in his heart? Mm -hmm. And he wanted to marry her, but he did not have sexual relations with her. According to the account in the Shulan Maiden, uh, she stood true to what she felt was right. And, uh, you know, even in the book, from what I get out of it, even after they left the island, they had sexual relations before they were married. So it wasn't just the island setting we're looking at, we're looking at after the island setting. And there's no record of them being married even when they got back on, uh, if I'm not like, because that, that ends up being the, the, the climax of the book, when he steps out of the truck. They get married at the end. You don't, you don't remember that? I remember, the, at, at, I remember them. The book? I remember them being married at the end of the book, but I also remember of them sometime before that referring to them spending a weekend together or something. But there's no mention of sexual relations in that weekend. I have to read it again. It it, it leads you to believe that. When I read it, it led you. If I'm if I'm thinking of the right instance, you know, I read the book through once. Uh, I can't remember every page of it, but I remember. Well. I, did, did you go over to the store and buy the book? I bought the book. Which store? Barnes & Noble. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you, did you... Well, never mind. Well, this is just just a principle that I had interjected mm -hmm. in here. You know, that's... A person... That's, that's fine. It could be a... You know, as you say, it may be different than what how I view it. Mm -hmm. It's a principle that Jesus gives us. But then, uh, finally, I thought maybe we should look at 1 Corinthians 15.33, and I guess we don't really have to read it, but we all know what it is. Simply stated, it says, Do not be misled. Bad associations spoil you. And Brother McClure and myself, uh, for years and years and years, we stood on the platform and talked to the congregation about staying away from reading material like this and watching it on television, maybe on the internet or on the mm -hmm. computers, or re reading the true romance novels, you know, that have that kind of stuff. That's, that's the stuff that we, we've counseled for years that people shouldn't do. But so, not all romance novels are bad. Pardon? Not all romance novels are bad, though. Not all what? Romance novels are bad. Well, perhaps not all of them, but some of them surely are. Okay. Anyway, they're, they're, they're included in the, well, the magazines and the stuff we get from the society, you know, they mention them same things. Mm -hmm. sure, boy. So I might summed it up this way, that this is the kind of book that the society continues to warn, to warn us about, to avoid reading, and, and the story is unfit for a Christian to read. It's bad association. That's, that's the way I do it. It's, it's bad association. It could lead some serious troubles for other young girls or something like that. And then, you know, might look at that and say, well, sister wrote that, it must be all right, you know. And, and it, it, it really could cause a serious problem. But see, then we're getting back here to the intent. My intent was not to create these sexual fantasies or to bring up these feelings in person. To be honest, brothers, I wrote an adventure about two people who were stranded on this island. I didn't even classify it as a romance. The publisher did. My intent was an adventure. And well, I tried to make it realistic. I mean, let's be honest. If yes. you're a single person stuck on a deserted island with no hope of rescue. I don't think that a Christian should rope something like that person. That, uh, but now we're getting into personal opinion, though. Well, okay. I'm basing my opinion on what I've learned from studying the Bible for many, many years. Uh, there's many other things that a Christian could do that would be based on an opinion, too, that could be good or bad, that would be terrible. You know? 
Well, I've seen a few things brothers have said and done that offended me that were in poor taste too, but I keep it to myself. But this book you see is out there. The damage is done. It, 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 and I don't, is, what, what do you think you might be able to do about it? Anything? Right now, I can't do anything because I'm under contract with the publisher for the rest of the year. For a year? For a year. When, when, when did that start? I don't know. I'd have to pull out my contract and look about. at it. Yeah, maybe about a couple months ago, a month? I think November. I think like it's up in November. Well, let's look at one other scripture that, that helps us to see uh, the balance of it. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. This is a scripture that's used many times, Ephesians 5, 3 and 4. 5, 3 and 4? Yeah. It says, Let fornication and uncleanness of every sort or greediness not even be mentioned among you, just as it befits holy people. Neither shameful conduct, nor foolish talking, nor obscene jestings, things which are not becoming, but rather the giving of thanks. You see, the Bible even encourages us not to even discuss things of fornication or uncleanness, which would refer to swearing by advertise joking making by ever jokes Jim that could be I could be wrong in that but at the same time what are we talking about are we writing it down are we publishing it but when you walk around with it on it's the same thing it's public it's it's out there the friends have seen it okay it's out there the friends know it's there. Mm -hmm. The well, friends talked about it. This scripture in the context of obscenities. I feel I did not use any obscenities in my book because an obscenity is worldly slang or swear words per se that bring up sexual, what's the word? Several words that were make the person uh, mention or think about sex right off the bat. That's that's what an obscenity is. The F word. That's an obscenity. There's several others I can think of that are obscenities. You know, I did not use any obscenities. Okay, then. So the words that are used in the context of the book are within the context of the words being used. Like hell, damn. Um, think quite honestly. Um, yeah, they are down in writing, but it's no worse than I've heard elders say. In fact, when I first moved here, I worked in service with an elder, and um, he said, um, all the friends do is pitch and complain. Um, that was between me. I didn't take offense because, you know what, we all say those words. You know, if, if you sit here and say that you don't say them, I, I got to question them. You know what I mean, Jim? I agree. I mean, let's, let, let's, let's be honest. And I'm always arguing with that. But the question about it is, what we're concerned about is the publishing of it. Uh -huh. You know, putting it out for public distribution. And it, it goes beyond that. Uh, because of the fact it goes into the sexual conduct uh, in a very graphic uh, detail. Graphic, you mean what in graphic? The fondling of the breast and the description of it, things of that nature. By today's standards, that's not considered graphic. Not in the world. But it surely is in the world. We're, we're not looking, in a sense, at today's standards. We're looking at other standards. So, okay. See, that's one of the problems. That's one of the scary things out there. That's what affects every one of us, is today's standards. That's the problem that affects all of us. Mm -hmm. That's the sad thing about it. Even the society has changed their standards over the years. Why? Because they realize they don't want that. A lot of our, our literature used to be done under European standards, now it's not. Because the European standards were lower than what the society uses. Even their illustrations. But they clean that up, straighten that up. Because if you look at some of the older literature that the depicting of the scenes and stuff were the European standards, they realized that wasn't appropriate around the world. Because the European standards are different than here. 
you know, and they still are, but that's not the same as society you would like because they realize the European standards are Bible standards. Okay. So then you, you brothers obviously took took offense to this. I, I can see that you took offense to this. When let me ask you a question. When you read the account of David and Bathsheba and how he continually watched her and observed, do you take the same offense to that? No, because of the per I just read it uh, this morning in my Bible reading. Okay. Uh, it's not condoned. No. Uh, they were punished by Jehovah for it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a total different context. Okay. I never said I condoned, you know, any actions that worldly people do as far as, in, I mean, the way you guys are coming across that I'm saying it's okay to go out there and commit fornication and immorality. I'm not condoning it and I'm not saying that. You know? My biggest concern about your book some young sisters reading it and their heads being filled with various ideas. Well, the, the word is stumbling. That's that's what it very possibly can do to the way I look at it. And that's my opinion. Okay. okay. Thank you for saying that. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. I never even told anybody in the King Kingdom Hall that I was publishing, having a book published. I have not oh, encouraged goodness. anyone to buy it. I have not talked about it in the Kingdom Hall or service. And the only the only reason I'm really upset is because your name is in big print across the bottom of that book mm -hmm. by your author. Mm -hmm. And and now these these kids know who you are. I mean, they, that was written I by a sister. That. that that's. But how are they going to find out if nobody's talking about it or knows about it? How are they going to find out? Well, let me, well, let me you wait, wait and see what letters we get on it, and I'll tell you. <laughs> well, it hasn't been talked about in Carter's the Service. Shadow's talked about in the Service. Not about my being, book. Well, about being published. About being published. Oh. About being published. But well, I me, haven't. Well, you, you, you talk, let, let me ask you. Last. That Thursday night you pulled me in the back room, Jim, you said that a couple of sisters complained about it. The uh, fornication or the, the immorality in the language. Is, right? Is that what you said? You said a couple of sisters complained about it. The immorality in language. Do you recall saying that? I remember saying that. Okay. And who are the two sisters? I remember, I, I'm not going to say who the two sisters are, but it was talked about in field service because of comments that were heard about the book. And I don't know where they got the comments. Okay. Um, because we have a few concerns about this. Right, well, I understand that, because, but the so the concern should not be where we heard about it, because uh, you aren't going to stop people from talking. There is a concern. There is a concern of, you know, my own wife came back from the group from the, in service and was talking with Shadow about it, and she was concerned because. Somewhere they, they heard the comment that there was swearing and uh, there was sex and violence in it. Sex and violence. violence. That's, that was the comment that was said. And I, I, the, but this is gossip. I know, but what do we do as elders? If we hear gossip, we investigate before we do anything. Um, we don't just ignore it. Wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. Um, let me think about this. Yeah, I, I want to get back to the two sisters complaining. Because I don't quite understand. Um, with what I read in Matthew chapter 8. Mm -hmm. um, 18. Is it 18? I know what you're referring to. Yeah, when, um, Matthew 18, 15 to 17. 15 to 17, yeah. No. Oh, wait a minute. I get Matthew 8. That's why I can't find it. Um, I want to know. Yeah, 15, we need more over it. If a brother commits a sin, go lay bare his fault between you and him alone, and if he listens to you, you have you have gained your brother. Mm -hmm. But if he does not listen, take along with you one or two more in order that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every matter may be established. If he does not listen to them, speak to the congregation. If he does not listen even to the congregation, let him be you just as a man of the nations and as a tax collector. Um... 
if someone you said that a couple of sisters complained mm -hmm. when when they approached you Jim I, did they approach you too they just approached no, Jim I don't even know what that okay so when they approach you then as a spiritual shepherd mm -hmm. you encouraged them to apply Matthew 18 and when they came back to you what did they say that I said Matthew 18 doesn't apply why why because you did not sin against those individuals. If they took an offense to Kim writing the book, then we certainly if, sinned against them. They, they're, they're under obligation, Jim, to come in the we're not, talk, we're not talking about a personal thing here. We're talking something that's public. This is publicly published. This is nothing personal. This was this was put out for public. How did I find out? I bought a book off a public uh, mm -hmm. place. So. You're saying Matthew 18 doesn't apply here, and all of those steps are sidestepped. Doesn't doesn't apply. Matthew doesn't 18. Doesn't apply. Wow. So then, well, I don't see how it would. So then, Matthew 5 wouldn't apply then by me, leaving my gift at the altar, and making peace with those who have complained. Okay. How could you make peace? Because I could approach the person and say, "Look, I'm so sorry that this book offended you. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have the intent." Of offending anybody she wrote a story about two people on an island what would naturally take place well they still had things that they had to get worked out and that's part of the story John. I, I disagree about things that naturally take place okay. you, want, you want to get the information here okay. Find the Watchtower article where it says about how Jehovah um, created man and woman with the natural desire to fall in love. Mm -hmm. We're not arguing with that. But to sit here and say that that was wrong, to write okay. that, natural, de awake. natural de desires. 1983 Awake, November mm -hmm. 8th, page 16 to 18. It's under the subheading, and they lived happily ever after. And it says, The subject of romance has fascinated readers throughout the ages. Of course, this is only natural, since God placed in man and woman the desire to fall in love and marry. It is not surprising, then, that romance is an ingredient of most fiction, and this is not necessarily objectionable. Some romance novels have even attained the status of fine literature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and then it gets into the intent of the writer well it says creating sexual fantasies is indeed the intent of some authors these feelings are conjured up in the minds of the writers they aren't real so in the setting of that story being on a deserted island they fall in love they commit to each other. In God's eyes, they're married. It, but they didn't even believe that themselves. The book doesn't. Lead you these to. these are fictional characters, Jim. Right, but these the characters are you not carry real. the fictional characters back to reality. They don't consider themselves married when they get back. But they're worldly people. I mean, you yeah, don't go by worldly standards. <laughs> okay, so then. So then you're not going to allow me to apply Matthew Matthew 5, 23 in this matter to make peace with those who obviously have a problem with the book? Because you said, Jim, there was a couple of sisters who complained. The, the sisters I, I heard the complaints from, the, the way it came through, was talking in the, in the car groups and service. Uh, Shiloh probably would know as well as anybody who was in that car group when they discussed the book that day. Because yeah. a couple different times it was discussed, I don't even know for sure exactly okay, what so it was, but I heard it came through. I went and got the book to read it, so I could sit down with you and let you know that it bothered some people when we could talk about it. So what did I do? Rather than encourage someone to go out and read the book, or buy the book, I said I'll take it upon myself to read it and know what's being talked about. But see, what we're saying is, you should have told us when they approached you, 
and said they were offended by it, you should have asked them if they applied Matthew 18 first. Because it seems okay. like even if it seems okay. like whenever a problem comes up, Matthew 18 gets totally put on the back. Right. The back I understand burner. that. I understand that. But Matthew 18. Even if you applied Matthew 18 and I read that book, it wouldn't change a thing. Well, yeah, because you're be, you'd be approaching in the map based on Matthew 18, but I want to get to the two sisters, a couple of sisters that complain. Because you know what, Jim? To my to my knowledge, mm -hmm. it's only four sisters that have that, that book. I don't only, even know if these people read the book. There you go. I don't even know if they read the book. There so you go. Hearsay. So it's hearsay, so, okay. Jim. Is it, any, is it here's it anymore when I got the book? That's why I don't bought the book. Did okay. I come here without well, reading the book? Why did you buy the book? Based on hearsay. Yep. So you don't know whether they had Deanna's book confused with Kim's or not. So you don't know for sure if the ones talking about my book actually read it. No, I don't know if they read it. Okay. And it doesn't make any difference because I went and read it. That's why I'm here. I'm not here from what they said. I'm here. I guess you I don't understand it. what we're trying to say. You know, as far as we know, no one is talking about my book and knows about, you know, any of this stuff. But. Unless it's hearsay and gossip. Okay, if it is hearsay and gossip, could I get on the platform and say you shouldn't talk, you shouldn't be gossiping about this book? Well, no, I can't say that. Because I read the book and, and it shocked me, it shocked Russ. So you're saying it's okay for them to be gossiping no, I'm not about saying my book? If they're talking about something, if they're talking about something in the car group and service, and that uh, seems very immaterial to the reason we're calling on you folks today. Okay. Uh, I read the book, or I skimmed through it. I didn't read every word, but I, I read it quite a few of the pages, mm -hmm. and I was offended. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have done <laughs> that. Since I, you know, I turned around and changed my life. This is, this is the stuff I lived with for 50 years, you know, before I became witness. And uh, it's just something about it don't seem right to me. Okay, okay. so let's cut through the chase here, and I understand where you guys are coming from. So, what are you saying? Are since you apparently have been as a congregation matter, are we talking disciplinary action? Well, we want to know how you feel about it. Then. That's really what we came to find out, because we're concerned. We haven't, we haven't done anything but take the first step to talk to you to see how you feel about it, you know, where you're coming from with it, because we're concerned. As far as? Others being stumbled, the, the well, I'll be honest, I'm not going to promote immorality and fornication and tell these young girls, you know, that it's okay to do that if that's what you're worried about. Well, that's really what the book is promoting. That's what we're concerned about. That's why we're concerned. Okay, two people falling in love is... But yeah, I, I see your point, Jim. But, you know, from a story point of view, there has to be a little, you know, a little conflict in there. Um, they they live on opposite you know ends of the earth I guess you could say Texas and California so as a story writer you have to you have to get through a conflict so that in the end everything all works out happily ever after because they do get married have more children um, but see so it seems to me like we need to get back to the intent of the writer well um, you know go ahead. I, 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 I was more concerned about some of the language that was used and some of the graphic pictures that, you know, they wouldn't have really had to have been in there to, to have uh, they had this, uh, whatever you call the getting together there. Mm -hmm. and some of that probably wouldn't have to have been there and you could still have a story. But that, the way you describe some of the things, I, I thought was that was kind of bad. Yeah. That's I, I can certainly see it in a story like that, writing it, if you you got to have some some kind of a, I don't know, theme or a 
Okay. Something going for you, that there ain't nobody going to want to read it, you know. Right. You have to do appeal to some readers without getting, without going overboard. So, so then, are you saying then um, that you felt that Kim went overboard? I think she did some in, of the in some of her expletive or explaining what was taking place. Okay. Yeah, Make, maybe to do. making pictures almost okay. in your mind of what was taking place. I think you maybe you know a little too far with okay. some of that. So, so, but, but there, but there again, though, Russ, that's still your personal opinion, though, right? Because you know, someone else could could read that and say, well, you know what? It's it's really it's really not that not that offensive. I, well, I don't know if because you because you know what um, we're not gonna we're not gonna tell names, but we know of two sisters that. Well, I was gonna bring up the elder in Arizona. Well, him and his wife, regular pioneers. And even a couple sisters in this hall have bought the book, and we we asked them when when you approached me with this, you know, we we know of two sisters that bought the book, mm -hmm. and there are two family members that have the book, and we called them and asked them if they took offense to it, even with what was described in the story. And they all said no. They found they did not find it offensive. One sister told because, me because because yeah, you you have to write a scene and you have you have to make a mental pic some sort of mental picture, but it's not dwelled on in any length at all. And the one sister told me she says, well, I figured since there was no one around to marry them at that point, the first time on the island, they were married. In Jehovah's eyes, they were married. And they just needed to work out the problems and happily ever after. Which so she said, I didn't have a problem with it. But you go along with the story. And I asked her about the swear words in there. And she says, it's no worse than I've heard everybody else use. Even elders. We're based on what we're saying off Bible standards, not person, uh, people's opinion. The other thing I'm looking at is when I read that account, uh, if I'm remembering the book right, uh, she got pregnant prior to their getting married, after they were back here, not on the island, if I'm reading the account right. She got pregnant on the island. Okay. There was no protection on the island. Okay. Because I thought there was, I thought there was a, um, account in the book where they got together prior to being married even when they were back in the United States. Yes, there was. See, and, and that with a question is fornication. But well, see, they know. were already married in God's eyes. But but they weren't legally married. They could have gotten married if that was their if that was what they wanted to do. All the points I made in my first uh, outline that we went over here. Each time we read something we read a scripture. And each of those things that we read, that scripture kind of pointed to the badness of it, mm -hmm. right? And that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. The first one's uh, not, not a rotten saying come out of your mouth. Well, some of those words are kind of rotten, you know. You've got to admit it, they are. And uh, some of these sexual overtones and so forth, uh, well, they, they don't go along with the chasteness that, that we're supposed to exemplify and that that's what the way it struck me they don't that's well we can appreciate that so I'll tell you I'll tell you what one thing really bugs me this is this is a pet peeve I guess because I am a writer and I know a lot of these words and a lot of the friends don't know the meaning of them and they're using them. And being a writer, I know these definitions, but really irritates me and is an obscenity, very bad obscenity that I've heard many brothers use is bugger. Mm -hmm. No, it does. That's for sure. And most people don't know the meaning. Most people don't know. Yeah. So, so in her book, and I'm not trying to defend it per se, but in the context that those words were used are well within the context of how the dictionary even uses the words.
I didn't, I didn't make any curses against God. I didn't use any obscenities. I'm, I guess when I started reading the book, I, I was surprised at about how many curse type words were used. I guess that was a surprise. To be honest, um, I didn't realize I had used hell, the word hell, so much until I reread it. Um, you know, I probably would have cut a few of those out. Well, I guess it's done. Uh, now, what can we do about it? That's, that's what it's well, I, you know what? I, I almost have to insist um, that I be given the opportunity to apply Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Because you said there was a couple sisters that complained. I, that I heard it through the know, grapevine. You know what, Jim? And I heard that through the grapevine. I don't even know who they are. Okay. So okay. I just but heard it through the grapevine. I, but if there's a couple of sisters upset with me, you know, right. I have to go make peace with my brothers and sisters. Okay, but okay, even if you make peace with them, it's not going to change our call tonight. Because this this call had to me had nothing to do with that. Why? Because this has nothing to do with that. You know why? Because I took that book out and I read it, rather than go by someone else's words. Right. This whatever I heard, I I hear stuff all the time. So rather than going by someone else's word, because it's it was something that was published, I got a copy of it and read it. And there are there are things we've all probably read or said or did that we shouldn't do. Uh, and. Later on, you think, well, why did I do that? Sometimes uh -huh. it's a TV program uh, uh, or whatever. But you don't publicize it. You don't go beyond that. You say, okay, that's something I shouldn't have done. Uh, there was a program uh, a while ago on apostasy uh, that was on TV. And uh, you think, about well, that's something no one should have watched. But at first, you watch it or you see it. Uh -huh. And a number of people saw it. Why? Because they heard about it, they wanted to see what it was, they were may have been thinking about it for a right reason. And it comes down to, would you publicize it, would you tell someone else to read it or watch it? No. And, and, uh, and in a sense, I look at this like this, is would you want to keep publicizing it or would you, or is it something you would want to say, okay, maybe that's something I should keep away from, maybe that's something that would not be good for my health spiritually or the spiritual health of my brothers. Okay, if I said that and say, okay, you know, I probably would have done things differently. Right now, you know, I've got stuff set up that I cannot change and I'm under contract. But we understand that. Um. You know, I don't talk to the friends about my book. None of my family has talked. You know, Other than the fact that we mentioned that it's, you know, it is published. Mm -hmm. You know, the friends have asked me, you know, I heard you've got a book, come, is it published? Yes. That's it. I drop it. You know, I'm not publicizing it to the friends. Why didn't you use a pen name? <laughs> ah, that, I was waiting for you to say you know, that. That's a if, good question. Wait a minute. If Kim would have used the pen name, would it have changed things? No, it wouldn't have. Okay, but... Not not as far as she's personally concerned, but as far as our sister's arguing about... Right, okay, okay. It's okay to read it because she wrote it. Okay, now if I used a pen name, nobody would have known I wrote it. Mm -hmm. To me, I felt hypocritical doing that. Yeah, I can see yeah. your point. I okay. felt like a I'm, I'm glad that you laughed when you said you used the pen name. I'm glad you did because that, that broke the ice right there. To see... Uh, because that, you know, I, I, you know, I do agree in the sense that, you know, the language probably wasn't necessary for making a story, but in the context that my wife used the language, falls well within the definition of the dictionary when that language is used. The only, the only thing that would be the little sisters that read it wouldn't know it was another sister that, that wrote it. That and if somebody wanted to be. counsel them that they shouldn't read Something like I, that. I can understand that. that and that's, that's, where, that's where I come there's, from. There's that. good wisdom in that, Russ. Good wisdom in that. Um, there again, with the fornication, um, 
we have the opinion and we view it as that when they made that commitment to each other they no longer had relations with anybody else that and, and even the the woman in the book mentally was still tied to him and he was obviously well, yeah, because he broke it off too, with his previous he broke girlfriend. off with another girlfriend. Um, so in that context, personally, I don't have a problem with it because they were committed to each other. From the, from the time they left the island to the time they got married, they were still committed to each other. But in order to keep a story interesting and going, there had to be a conflict that obviously had to be worked out. That's the way I view it. As far as the swearing, if you notice, it's only worse in the first couple of chapters. And the reason for that is because I was trying to come across as he was a stressed out, you know, workaholic type of person, you know, uptight, um, type A personality. You know, not that I'm trying to make any excuses, but if you notice in later in the book, he is not using that kind of language anymore because he's calmed down he's mellowed you know I was only trying to bring across his type of personality you know what type of person he is and to be honest the word hell and damn I've grown up with it my entire life it, it doesn't bother me but it's still something we should try to control and I try to work on it But you have to admit, if someone's crashing in an airplane, they're not going to be saying, oh my goodness. Right, but that those words are used, as you said, repeatedly. There's no question. Okay, so you're not, you're not going to let me approach... I don't even remember. I don't even remember. You don't, you don't even I don't remember. Really remember. I heard it. I heard it like a side conversation. It's, it's got to be more well, than we're sorry that you brothers took offense to that. Um, we, I did not let, I mean, I even had, um, it, it was even cleaned up quite a bit before it even got published because even I had a problem with some of the ways things were originally written. It was, I, it was I had, written when I was in active. Yeah, eight years ago or so, eight, nine years ago. Uh, even then, I had it. So we, we cleaned it up, and with what was left, I felt with the content and the intent of the writer that in this situation I felt that it would it would be proper as adults as a realistic setting the whole nine yards and yes some young ones might take offense to that because Kim's name is on the book because like you said a sister wrote it and I can appreciate that so I guess we owe you an apology because you read it and took offense to it. Well, I guess I'm more concerned. I view it as fornication. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I do view yeah. it as that. I don't know any other way to view it. Um, and even if you would, I'm going to go right back to the point, even if you view they were married on the island, they did not view it that way when they got off the island. You know, so then that's, there was not that connection. From what I read in the book, mm -hmm. well, I I could see where that would be left up to interpretation. To where somebody might say, "Yeah, I don't see the connection here," but going through the story, you know, you, you can see that the people, um, you know, they 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 try to you know work situation. Like I said, you you've got to have a story to keep the readers interested. Right, I understand that. Okay, one of the things I recall now. Even even if it was a married couple, it wouldn't it wouldn't be very good to have the graphic description like there was a couple of times when they were having sex. If you recall something about the arms and legs being all twisted together, or tangled up, or something like that, as I recall reading, you recall that account? Um, I believe it says um, yeah, they fell together in one. Tangled mass of arm and legs. 
something like that. Some, something like that. But they weren't having sex at that point because they were still dressed. Well, I don't. I, I, I took it that they were. Okay. But I think that they weren't. So see, so I think I think you can appreciate too that we got to get back, you know, to the intent of the writer too, because you know one person could read something one way and view it one way, and another person could read it another way and take a totally different view of it. Yeah, I can think of a scene in another book that my mother mentioned here not too long ago that someone read the same scene and they didn't think anything yeah. of it, it was clean, and then someone else read the exact same scene and said it sounded like masturbation. So you can see how two different people can interpret, my mom thought that scene was totally innocent. It, it's nothing that I wrote, you know, I'm just using as an example of something else. You know, my mom thought it was a total innocent scene and someone else took it as the woman in the book was masturbating. So. See, like Philippians 1.10 talks about stumbling others, and that's what we're concerned with. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see anyone get stumbled. And, uh, well, um, I, and I, I appreciate that, because I don't want to do anything that stumbles mm -hmm. anybody either. Um, would you do me a favor then, brothers, if you hear anyone else complaining about the book, would you please encourage him to apply Matthew 18? If we will do that, but they may have legitimate complaints. It, they, they still have to approach me on it. Right, right. They, you know what? If I understand that, but I guess... If I'm driving down a road and I see my brother committing fornication, mm -hmm. am I obligated to apply Matthew 18? Russ, am I obligated to apply Matthew 18? If, if I'm driving down the road and I see my brother committing fornication, am I obligated to apply Matthew 18? You're obligated to tell him to report. That's so I'm still approaching my brother on Matthew yeah. 18. You answered right. correctly. I am. You're because obligated. you're right. I'm, I'm obligated to go lay bare his sin, no matter what it is, no matter how serious it is. I'm obligated to go lay bare the well, sin and give him the opportunity to approach the elders when, you know, and what I would say is, brother, you have seven days to go and talk to brother Jim, Jim McClure. You know, I obviously see what you've done. I'm going to give you the opportunity to go and approach Jim McClure first. In, on the eighth day, I will call Jim McClure and say, this is what i see. seen. I talked to him. That's applying Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. Under any circumstances, Matthew right. 18 should be applied. Right. But would you all alone? Huh? Were you all alone when you saw that? I, I, I've never seen it, but I know of another you know project that it happened to. If you were all alone. It would it would be tough. It would be a tough situation. It, you were, no, it would. It would be very, very tough. I and mean, you'd, you'd probably have to know the brother really good, too, to be able to do something like that. But, yeah, it you would, but you're still under obligation right. to apply Matthew. And, and that's why, rather than listening to what anybody said, i got to copy the book to read it for myself, to know what was going on. Because I just overheard this this little bit and, and a few people talking and I just said, if you want me to find out, just find out for yourself. Because it I know and we're gonna be asked what we're doing about it and now having called on you and discussed it with you, we're gonna be able to say we're working. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, um just a question. You mentioned earlier you had some letters of complaints. No, I no. said we, we may get some. Oh, you may get some. May get some. Oh, may okay. get some. Yeah, because I was... Who would, no, we, we have... Who would but, write a letter and comply? I mean, we I do get letters. Do you? Oh, sure. And I can't remember what it was, was, but just recently we got a comment. I forget what it was about something. You guys something. need anything to drink? You no, I'm fine. I'm fine. But I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. About uh, someone in service brought something, but it wasn't regarding this, it was regarding something else. And the person came to us, uh, and in that case... You know, the person's not going to come, then, then the elders have to handle that if this complaint came out of field service, for example. Because it's not the individual, then it's, it's way beyond that. And so you, we, sometimes we get comments from all different kinds of stuff. And that has nothing to do with this, but it's just, we, we get all kinds of comments. We need stuff more. Okay, because I just wanted to make sure, because it sounded like you said, it sounded like you had received some letters no, we haven't about received. my book. Okay. 
but if you know if the right people get yeah. over read it, we're, well, we, we're going to get some. You know, we like I said, we know of two sisters that have bought the book. You know, we gave two to the family members, which is obviously mm -hmm. the standard reason. Uh, we are not encouraging the friends to go and buy the book. Um, because I will not do a book signing in O'Connell Falls so that right. none of the friends feel obligated to show up and purchase the book. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I will not do a book signing in O'Connell Falls. In the local area here. Or Jill or, you know, close just, to where the friends live. Just for that reason. It's because we don't want the friends to feel obligated that they have to buy the in book. In fact, I don't even won't. tell the friends about my book signings. I don't mention no. it. They may see it in the paper because the bookstore puts it in the paper, but, you know, and some of the bookstores will send out stuff. But, you know... What uh, is your feelings when your contract runs out? What, what would be your feelings about it? I haven't even really thought about that. I'll have probably you? have to do some research. Um, to be honest, I tried to find an article about writing fiction and I couldn't find anything. Um, I can't remember anything on either. I've never mentioned we, about science fiction, you know, but I know the same principles apply, you know, that we would want to be careful. Well, I know if you're tied down to a contract, your hands are pretty well tied on it right now. Yes. I know the society has written some strong stuff on science fiction. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, it, you know, I, I've given that talk, Choose Your Associates Wisely, mm -hmm. and it talks how bad some romance novels are. Mm -hmm. But this article right here says that not, not necessarily all romance novels right. are and, bad. And that's so true. I think we can appreciate that they're not all bad. Right. And we're not saying they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can appreciate where, you know, like I said, somebody might take offense to it. And again, if... You know, we obviously owe you brothers an apology if you had, you know, because you obviously took offense to it. Um, so, in that sense, you know, we, we do apologize. And we're concerned. We, you know, we are concerned because we don't want anybody stumbled or, right. you know, anything. So let us um, mull over what we've talked about. We'll probably talk to you again sometime in the future. So we want to mull this over. Okay? We need to think this over and yeah, uh, there's some things that you've brought up that I hadn't thought about before. I, I'd like to think about it. Yes. As far as why, well, right now I just can't think of it. Right. Just what it is, but you did. <laughs> I mean, had they had objections or points? You mentioned some things that I hadn't, hadn't thought. Like, like what? I mean, what? Well, your illustration of on the island with two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being married in Jehovah's eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I, I mean, we, I mean, we haven't even really thought about you know looking up, you know, how the society would view anything like that at that point, um, because you know we we just took it for 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 granted basically. I guess you could say mm -hmm. we took that scene for granted that. You know, when that happened in Jehovah's eyes, they are they are married. Uh, at least that's well, it, it, it doesn't affect the the descriptions of the graphic language mm -hmm. of what took place, whether they were or they weren't. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you tomorrow night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll see me in China. <laughs> okay. Times they are a changing.